everybody. Welcome to the Fired Up with CJ show. Today we're going to be talking, continuing our conversation on the book, Write Your Stress Away. Can you hold up the book? Sure. Tame the Tension in Your Life. Thank you, Susan. We have Susan Ives McCollum as well as Diane Harding Price, um, who are part of the Get Well Project. And in the first segment, we're talking about um, how these uh, the project itself and the goals of the project, how you guys met. And then we actually did kind of a very abbreviated version of the SAGE process. That is the process that's outlined in the book on how you can write your stress away. And what I wanted to talk about in this segment is both of you actually had um, physical ailments um, that you actually were able to um, get benefit from writing during this process. So I was wondering if each of you could share kind of what happened um, and then also the research that you found about writing and stress. Sure, sure. So back in 19, so I've been a writer my whole life. And in the book, I talk a little bit about probably being five or six years old and writing on a little, in writing on a little scrap of paper, some emotion I felt um, and hid it in my little pink suitcase in the closet. So Ugh. writing with and expressing emotion as a form of disclosure, which research really supports, has al had always been a part of my life. So fast forward to being on a business trip and um, I just had um, a sense, an intuitive sense that something wasn't right and um, discovered a breast lump. Mm -hmm. And through my writing, um, just got in touch with something isn't right and um, began the medical process with physicians. And to make a very long story short, the it was referred to a surgeon who said, you know, we just, th this isn't typical, let's just wait six months. Wow. And, yeah, and do another test. You know, we'll have another mammogram because you just had a mammogram and let's have another mammogram in six months. And through my writing, I just was really in touch with my intuition and what I was feeling. Um, the writing, and essentially I was writing my story and also writing, what does somebody else think? Because I was all caught up in how do I, how do I navigate through this complex uh, situation. And through that writing, I became very assertive, very uh, much a self advocate, and said to the doctor, um, I need a biopsy, I have to have a biopsy. And the response was, mm, you don't really need a biopsy, let's wait six months. And so we negotiated that I would go forward with the biopsy and do it under uh, local anesthesia, because his concern was that um, the risk of, of it being malignant was less than the risk of the anesthesia. So lo and behold, it was a malignancy. And um, I then subsequently went through surgery, chemotherapy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. And so I really attribute to the writing. And at one point, uh, a physician said to me, you know, the fact that you wrote and really listen to yourself, listen to your body, listen to your mind and spirit. And um, that gave me the clarity and the confidence in knowing what I needed to do, that that writing really saved my life Wow! in that way. And then the writing continued uh, through treatment and then through the subsequent years to um, be my constant companion to really focus on um, mind, body, and spirit wellness, and um, you know, getting in touch with myself, and gaining clarity once again, and third sort of third-party view objectivity of what am I doing? Am I really doing what I value in terms of taking care of my life and being the healthiest, happiest uh, person I can be? Hmm. Wow. Okay. And then I'm. Um... I want to just ask one follow-on question, Diane. So as you were writing through getting chemo chemotherapy and getting in touch with yourself, and it's, it's special because it's a heart, right? So it's getting back to what you really value, which seems like the heart piece. What did you 
discover um, and how did it birth this project or did it? How was it related to this project, if at all? Well, it, it certainly contributed to this project. And, you know, when Sh Sue sharing, you know, the fact that we're such great friends and that we were diagnosed each with a life threatening disease within the same very close period of time was, you know, kind of awakening. Yeah. <laughs> but back to your question about heart. Um, you know, it really, I, it, the, the writing and the, through the experience confirmed my commitment to life, uh, confirmed my commitment to what I wanted to be and how I wanted to give back to others. I've always cared about giving back to others and making a difference in the world, but we can get so caught up in the busyness of life. And, you know, I was a consultant flying around on airplanes and doing all kinds of uh, very driven, you know, stereotypical type A kinds of things. And, and the writing really helped me um, to really get centered on and, and in touch with my heart and what really, really mattered so that you can shed all those scales of stuff that clings and keeps us from being the person and doing what really matters to us in the world. Mm. So, um Hopefully I answered your question. You did. Um, thank you. No, it really, it, it does. Thank you, Susan. Tell me a little bit about, so, well, unbelievable that both of you had life-threatening illnesses within that short. And so tell me about what, what was going on with you. Sure. Um, yes, it, it is quite a coincidence, but I was diagnosed with uh, type 1 diabetes at the same time um, that Diane had her breast cancer. And um, it came out of nowhere, uh, didn't run in my family, and was just really quite a surprise. Um, I started off uh, just feeling overwhelmed by that diagnosis because it meant so many lifestyle changes. Uh, I had to be careful to watch my diet. Um, I had to exercise, um, you know, take in good nutrition, um, watch my stress in particular because that drives the blood sugar up. And through that process, I wanted to also be sure that I would, that this story of, be, of being diabetic, of having diabetes would not rule my life. It was really important to me that the diabetes be, you know, I'm, I'm gonna equate it to one storyline of my life, but that there's so much more to me than the diabetes. And so the writing helped me not only manage it and stay true to um, the program that I knew I had to be on if I was going to be healthy, but also confirmed for me that I could do other things, that this could, I could, in some ways, pigeonhole it, even though it's with me 24-7. It's just a piece of my life. It's not my whole life. So that's how the writing helped me. Mm. It's, it's really interesting how over time we don't realize that we're even doing it, but that you were very conscious, like, I don't want this to define me. So what were the things that you wanted to define you, if not the okay. being a di diabetes patient? Well, I wanted to um, go into counseling, which is what I did. I went back to school and got my master's degree. Um, I did quite a bit of traveling. I had the opportunity to go to um, Malawi, Africa, mm. and work with women and writing um, there. Um, I have a son who lives um, far, far away um, in other parts of the world, and I wanted to be able to participate in his life and be with his children and meet my grandchildren, and so travel became a, a big part of it. Mm. And um, it, it helped me balance my life more so than just focusing on the diabetes. When, when did this happen? I know, when, what, how old were you when this happened, if you don't mind me asking, just for both of you, I'm sure. curious. I was in my, I was 50. Okay. And I was in my late 40s. Okay, yeah, I think, I, I'm just curious because I'm someone who's in my mid-50s now, and I think that it's during these times that you're like, wait, what really matters to me and mm -hmm. um, the wake up can call can come in many different forms, but it's interesting that kind of late forties, you know, early fifties, kind of this sort of wake up call 
um, came to you? Um, you know, it's um, it, it's hard to think of a disease as being a blessing in your yeah, life. Yeah. But um, I do think that because of the diabetes, I'm healthier today than I might have been. Um, my you know weight is under control. I exercise every day, and it's just become a part of my routine that I really enjoy. Yeah. So. Um, I think that those that if you can find the hidden blessings in the challenges that you face in life, then you can get through them. Yeah, that's yeah, important. I, uh, yeah, I have to say the same thing. I, I used to describe it as the breast cancer diagnosis was a karate chop to the back of the neck and that it really got me in touch with what mattered. And you're absolutely right. You're sort of midlife, you know. And um, that combined with the writing, really, you're no longer invincible. You know, when you're younger, it's like you're invincible. You're going to live forever. Right. And, you know, and um, and I think the the writing helps you to really connect with what matters and stay focused. Mm, love it. Okay, very, we... very centering, um, centering tool. Yeah. I like it. So we've been talking to um, Susan Harding Price and Susan, sorry, Diane Harding Price and Susan Ives McCollum about their book, Write Your Stress Away, um, Tame the Tensions in Your Life. And um, thank you so much. And in the next section, I want to talk about some of the research that you found about stress and then how it relates to um, some of the mental and emotional stress and how you can use writing for that. So thank you so much. Thank you. It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support. Love and blessings.